You're listening to WRUU LP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, Community Radio with a Global Soul. Also streaming online at savsoundings.org. That's S A V S O U N D I N G S dot org. Check, check, one, two. Look like a little country. Some rock and roll and blues. Cause we sure love playing for good people like you. Let me know if you can hear me. Check, check, one, two. Welcome to Music Local and Sustainable, the radio show that features discussions with and the music of local musicians. I am your host, Dave Lake. Tonight, we're talking with Corey Chambers, singer and songwriter, who you may know as a member of the band City Hotel, or Paving Gravy, or Uncommon Collective, or the new Corey Chambers Jazz Band. Yeah. Welcome, Corey Chambers. Thank you so much, Dave Lake. Tell me a little bit about your journey to become a singer-songwriter. Well, my parents got me a guitar for high school graduation when I was 18. It was kind of a surprise to me, but I was really happy to get it. It was a good surprise. I decided to take a folk guitar class like immediately that summer after graduating, and that was a really good thing for me. It was a group class where you just kind of learned the open folk music chords. And I just kind of picked it up quickly. I really enjoyed it. It didn't take it, you know, too seriously. I think it helped that I was, you know, older. And then maybe didn't expect to get very much out of it, other than messing around and, and having a good time. So I took the folk guitar class and then went to Armstrong Atlantic State here in Savannah. Kept playing music all the time with uh, my neighbors there and. Uh, other buddies who were just kind of learning music at the same time and I remember my friend Chris Fullerton who plays uh, he's a drummer at the Savannah Theater still today he noticed something and and that was that a lot of the music that I like to listen to just in my free time was using a lot of these open folk music chords that I was learning and and that's really when things took off when I realized that I could play the songs that I was listening to and that's when I got hooked and started playing all the time and then I guess once I realized what what the songs I liked were constructed of I started trying to make my own and that's kinda what I'm still doing today I'm trying to get good at it <laughs> that's the that's the plan <laughs> how do the songs come to you do you have like a musical inspirations or do these songs just come unfortunately they just come I wish I was more disciplined and like forced myself to write more but Usually it's like uh, something that's bothering me a lot of times or something you think is kind of funny. A lot of times it's just an emotion that I I feel like I really need to get out and um, songwriting is a good way for me to do that. Are there any musicians that you find inspiring? Absolutely. I love John Prine um, just for the way he does the word play and um, doesn't take himself too seriously. He likes to put jokes in the song and I love that. I even love people like Roger Miller, who's even sillier. That's who I try to sound like. I really like Andrew Bird and Paul Simon. I really like a lot of rappers, too. I like acrobatic lyricists, and that seems to be what I find entertaining. So the words, that's where the songs come from? Yeah, I love puns and trying to build something that looks cool written on a page, as well as sounds cool. I'm always looking to put more tricks in the in the song if I can. You know, little silly puns and whatnot. I feel like you get extra points somehow if you do that. One of the big concerns among singers who spend a lot of time crafting the lyrics is performing in a bar or restaurant where the audience is really not paying much attention. Does that bother you? Well, not really anymore. I've, I've been doing it for so long. And if you don't learn to have fun while people aren't really paying attention to you, you, know, you won't play very many bar gigs in Savannah, I don't think. <laughs> so it's just sort of the nature of it sometimes. And I love playing in bars 
it's a lot of fun. And even if people aren't really listening to you, a lot of these songs are, are just kind of weird sounding, and uh, sometimes it just it's just fun to sing something weird in, in that environment anyway, even if people aren't necessarily hanging on your every word or whatever. I enjoy it. Luckily, this year we have a lot more theater gigs and quiet type rooms, which we love to do as well. And really, I mean, that's the goal is we want people listening to us as opposed to socializing and stuff. So but, as um, a band, uh, City Hotel then is wanting to move more toward concert performances than bars. For sure. And uh, we're doing, we just booked another music festival out in Pennsylvania. This one is, that's in September. We played a music festival in New York State um, last summer and we had a great time. That seems to be like a really nice audience for us. They really enjoyed what we do. So we're excited to do more of that as well. Well, let, let's do some of your songs and we can talk a little bit about the lyrics. Okay. I thought for the first song I would do the weirdest one, I think, that people ask me about a lot uh, that City Hotel does. It's just kind of sparse lyrically and uh, hopefully lends itself to some imagination. But It's called The Judge. It was on our CD. Uh, called Dogged Days. All right, well, this is the judge. One time you changed your name to Judy. built a set then shouted to me you built some words then sentenced me while old folks watched on the TV I look around and I'm competing Looking born while I am singing. Coca Cola cup in front of you. You said I did not make it through. Oh, trial, gavel, long black robe. Bell test, contest, TV show. like you'll set a precedent appointed by the president you can't say how long you'll be here might be judging 99 years Trial, gavel, long black road, bell test, contest, TV show. Trial, gavel, long black road, bell test, contest, TV show. I guess you can say that not every song is inspired by afternoon television. <laughs> Correct. So what was the origin of that song? Well, I was feeling this uh, strange feeling, feeling both judgy <laughs> and judged upon. 
And it's sort of uh, the human condition, it seems, sometimes to, to not be able to quit making judgments, you know, just looking around at stuff and also uh, be judged by the things that you do. And really, I just wanted a, a passive, aggressive way to, to tell someone that I thought they were being judgmental. <laughs> so, so I came up with Judge Judy, the TV show. Like one time you changed your name to Judy. That's the first verse, and I kind of thought that was funny, so I thought I'd keep, uh, keep going. And so for the second verse, I, would, I decided I would compare them to an American Idol judge. And I remember when I would watch American Idol, and they would have these enormous Coca-Cola cups. I don't know if you remember that or if you ever watched it, but product-placed Coca-Cola cups. And the third verse, appointed by the president, set in the precedence, that's a Supreme Court justice. And they don't know how long they're going to be there, you know, it's a life sentence. So those were sort of the three uh, passive-aggressive metaphors I found for judginess. The chorus is just kind of these unsettling things. So I wanted to, with that, I was just trying to describe what it felt like maybe to be judged right to be judged because <laughs> a long black robe right. the gavel yes the the instruments of judgment yes are part of the course oh, it's making me anxious just <laughs> talking about it <laughs> that's a, a typical format i suppose so whether it's a thing or, or a person that i want to get something out to it seems to help at least get started with the writing process but then once it's started I just want to be as creative as possible and, and maybe not even hold myself to the original notion or whatever that I had when I got started I, I really want to build like a cool construct and let it build itself I'm more interested in the cheap puns and the, the silliness so yeah for sure that's kind of what happens so initially it may begin as a statement something that you want to express Sure. And then you work on it from there to make it either more elegant or more silly. All right. <laughs> I'm still, uh, I'll let you know if I get go to the elegant. Well, I thought the three steps of, of judgment was quite elegant. Right. I I'll like that. that. I'll take it. I like that. Let's go with that. <laughs> I guess you're right. This song does make sense, Dave. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. I'm glad <laughs> we're doing this. I like it. What other the songs do you want to share? Well, I got a brand new song for the occasion. But, uh, you know, I like to write songs about modern technology and, and relationships. Here's one about a relationship gone awry. On the way to my new job When I went to see my friend My next words have been robbed He beat me there again In the den of the downtown In the silence of the sticks You'll always be around scary little click Am I wise enough to wonder Or just sharp enough to point Makes it hard for me to wander Cause you know where I'm going You know that we're not talking But you won't leave me alone It's clear I farmed a stalker When I tapped you on the phone And 
They say I'm lost without you Going wrong directions fast But I know I can do without you Cause I did it in the past I tell you when my skin got coldest I realized you would not stop I began to slowly notice like to shop. You know that we're not talking. But you won't leave me alone. It's clear I farmed a stalker. When I tapped you on the phone It's clear I farmed a stall When I tapped you on the phone <laughs> Certainly songwriters like to put the important message in the chorus. <laughs> and that seemed to with this one that's where much of the important message is in terms of farm to stalker. Yeah. And won't leave me alone. Right. Yeah. So I wrote this for Google. <laughs> This is a song to Google. What inspired this was uh, I'm a substitute teacher and I go to different schools all the time and I noticed when I would type the school into my phone to get directions to it, like the Google would pretty much finish the name of the school for me before I could type very many letters at all. It was alarming, so I got the idea to write this silly song, maybe try to make it sound like about a person that was being clingy but yeah it's about Google <laughs> so Google was the inspiration absolutely but it certainly is as you suggest it uh, could very well be someone <laughs> who you contacted and sure. developed a relationship with yeah and now you know it's over right. but they apparently don't know it's over right yeah, I tried to make it veiled so it could work both ways. But then I, I gave away the, the the joke of it, you know, immediately. I should have held on to that for a little while, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, I particularly like, you know where I shop. Right. I figured that would give it away there. So, no, I, I don't think that necessarily gives it away. Because in a relationship, and they know you go to Whole Foods, they can hang around Whole Foods and you'll be there. Absolutely. Uh, that, that certainly gives it more meaning. Sure. Certainly in a relationship <laughs> with a Google. So yeah, this one's kind of a an extended joke song. A novelty tune. I, I don't see it as a novelty tune. Well, that's good. Like maybe the origin was novelty, but it really speaks to relationships and the way that you use words. For instance, if you understand that it came from Google, but know that people hang around in groups. Sure. You made the comment about you in the clicks. Yeah. So it could be the click yeah. on the computer, or it could be a right. group that that person hangs around with. That's right. That's those points I'm talking about. I feel like I'm getting them now. I'm getting the points. This is what I've been waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> like you say, I'm using, in this case, less of a pun and more of a double entendre. Sure. I want it to be as uh, layered and as fun as possible for the listener, just in case they are actually listening. You never know. When you introduce the song, are you going to make some comment about its origin? I don't or wait until the end. Oh, this is a brand new one. I don't know. I'll pro I think I I would I would not. I'd probably just let it stand alone. And um, I'm hoping we can record this one. We're gonna do a record this summer. City Hotel is. We got a bunch of new material. Huh? But yeah, I I like that one. It kind of lends itself to the bluegrass minor chord progression there. Spooky sounding. 
so I'm hoping it'll make the cut on this next City Hotel record. But I would say no, I'll probably just play that and and let it sit. And uh, I like, I, I think I'd like to gauge some reaction to that tune before I spill the beans. <laughs> when you guys work on an album, do you work on it as a series of songs, or do you work on it as a unified whole? Well, our first little album was more of just a demo, and it was songs that we, Aaron and I had been playing for years on our own. Dog a Day is the one that came out in February of last year, about a year ago. We definitely knew we were creating stuff for, for an album, and we tried to write stuff for the band. And it worked out really well. It's a kind of a more cohesive album. But what's happening now is we're preparing for the third album and it seems to be way more of a collaborative effort which is really really exciting like some I always want it to be like that but even if you want it to be it's not easy to execute that all the time and uh, lately it's been kind of a nice kind of effortless feel to it um, been a band for five years now and we're having a lot of fun I feel like we're at a really fun place with City Hotel and a lot of our practices are, are just uh, taking songs that we've written and, and adding completely new parts or mixing it up and changing it around and the products are have been really fun. Uh, I'm excited for a lot of these songs to be heard for the first time. Well, let's take this, a song like Stalker Farmer. You composed it. When it gets to the band, what happens? Well, generally... Aaron's such a phenomenal vocalist, he'll start looking for ways to add a harmony vocal, as is customary for bluegrass. So I'm lucky like that. He can add a lot of higher harmony parts that a lot of people can't hit, and so that adds uh, a dynamic right there that's awesome immediately. Lately we've been trying to just be as creative as possible and change up tempos. Um, that's what I'm kind of hoping. I wrote this song a couple nights ago because I knew I was coming here. But once I bring it to them uh, in practice, I'm kind of hoping somebody will suggest something far out. I don't know what that'll be yet, but it's almost to the point where I like bringing stuff as bare bones as possible with just a chord progression and some words and. Uh, the boys in City Hotel, they're, they're all great arrangers, and we have a lot of fun uh, you know, coming up with goofy stuff to do to try to make it interesting. So that's probably what will happen. Uh, I'm excited to see what turns that one takes. Here's a performance by City Hotel of a full band version of Stalker Farmer at a recent concert.
going wrong directions and bad. But I know I can do without you. Cause I did it in the past. I'll tell you when my skin got coldest. I realized it would not stop. I began to slowly notice. Jay Rudd's been writing a, a lot of great songs, um, and there's one in particular that he brought that we just added a part that slows down the tempo a lot and becomes funky for a minute, and then goes back into a bluegrass beat. It's really cool. We got a lot of cool material, and uh, like I said, we're playing a lot of quieter places this spring, so hopefully everyone will come out and see us and, and check it out. I'm excited. Now, in a set that you're doing in a quieter place where people can, can actually listen, how many new songs are generally worked into a set? Well, that depends. Uh, we don't like to make things more difficult for ourselves than need be. So unless we have time, you know, to kind of go over the new song a lot, we won't break it out but as long as there's time for the show and we've rehearsed it enough there's no limit and we'll do all new stuff if we can we love to do that mm -hmm. but usually you know three three or four new ones at the most brand new ones that's what you would get and that's cool that allows us to mix in you know the ones that people ask for and we want to keep doing those as well so yeah usually don't want to do too many new ones plus we're really forgetful and you know a handful is all we can handle of brand new stuff generally well you can point to the new album right with the new stuff absolutely a new album it's going to be called party in the back so <laughs> Inspired by a 1980s photo of our bass player Anthony Teixeira sporting a mullet. So, we're really excited about it for sure. And 